This is a subalpine fir. I just picked it up this summer and I've never worked with this species before. I've worked with other firs, uh, but not ones collected from the mountains and sold in nurseries, which is what this is. And this is Flexi. This thing is made to withstand a whole lot of uh, snow load, wind, all kinds of stuff. Um, this is a very young one and it's it's got a lot of vigor. It's got tons of these little buds all along the trunk and along the branches. So it, it looks like it wants to back bud quite a bit. So it definitely has the health to go through some bonsai training. Um, but it was recently collected. It was collected last fall, about a year ago. And it's, it's grown good. Um, but it's never seen bonsai life. It, in fact, still has the ground cover from where it was collected up in the mountains, which is cool. Uh, something I am going to be keeping in here and letting grow so it has that look. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this is, you know, I'm going to mainly keep it like it is. I'm barely going to do anything to, to move these branches about. I will select certain areas and thin a little bit. I'll keep the, the good thick branches and selectively take out some of the thinner ones. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to worry about um, gin and shari or anything because this is just a, a young tree. And you know, I think I'm going to keep it looking like that. I'll, I'll, it's a young tree, and I'm not going to try to force it to be old. It'll be decades before it gets a nice uh, bark on the trunk. So I'm just going to go young tree style on this and just simplify it a little bit. So to start with, I'm just going to be taking out some of these little twigs and things that are in the way. And I'm going to um, probably just rip them out of there with my pliers. I'm not going to worry about um, any of the, the little bit of scarring I do on this. It'll just build character for it. Ooh, it smells like a Christmas tree. This is a pretty quick operation using a pair of pliers. I'm going to go pretty low with some of these branches. I do like the look of the really low branches on here, so I'm going to uh, let it do that. You know what? This branch, it has hardly anything down low on it, but it does have quite a few buds up in here. So instead of damaging those, I am just going to trim this one off and then let this one try to do what it's going to do. It's got an interesting shape and whatnot. This branch on the other side, I don't think I need it so much because there is one right above it. So this one, getting ripped. Ripped it. I'm going to... Um, Take this with my hands and remove the buds that are on the branches uh, super close to the trunk and also anything that's growing right on the trunk. Of which there is a lot. Alright, super simple so far. So what I've done from this side is this will become an interesting fanned out shape here. It'll fan out like that. And I've removed any buds that are above, well, any buds that are closer to the trunk than the first branch. This other branch um, looks like this will be the first place where there's any sort of a um, another branch angle coming out. All right, moving up the trunk. Another branch coming off of this side. And I do like keeping this one here because it is directly on the opposite side of these two branches. It comes out uh, so an alternating pattern. And I'll just keep on alternating as we go up. This next branch up alternates from that side to this side, keeping that. And again, not really doing too much to these. I'm just going to keep most branches that are in good positions and not really trim them for uh, foliage pads yet. Here we have a position where there's two branches, one on either side, and I need to decide if I'm going to keep them both or get rid of one. This big branch is very necessary because there hasn't been much on this side up until that point. So I'm definitely going to keep that one. This other branch on this side, it has a branch right above it, 
What happens if I remove this? I just take my finger and my hand and cover that branch to see how that looks with or without. So without it, this branch is really good and that branch will spread out quite a bit. I may need to go down a little bit with that branch. But yeah, I could totally do without this branch. Because this, this big thick branch will become a, a feature branch and will have a lot of branching out on this one side. So yes, I am going to rip off this one. No going back from that. And nope, no cut paste. I'm not even bothering with that. If this tree is going to do good in my collection, it's going to have to get used to not getting cut paste. Trees that are pruned naturally won't get cut paste ever. All they have is their natural sap and any drying and uh, shrinkage of the cambium. All right, moving up the trunk, I'm just gonna simplify it a little bit more. So as we come up here, I have another thick branch that's above some of these other thick branches. It looks like most of the branch thickness is off of that same side. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and keep that. I kind of like this one, but there's a super awesome branch right above that too. Mm, I got to keep this one. I like it too much. I like to have a feature branch uh, in different positions as I go up. I'm not just interested in a branch off of one side. I want to see branches off multiple sides that are a very nice feature as you turn the tree around. As I go up, I can tell this tree is very young because there's still needles right on the trunk. This is not a very old tree at all. One thing it will have going for it is that if it stays healthy, it's going to have an incredible expression of youth with all those fat buds as it opens up in spring. it up towards this upper section of the tree I am going to start removing some of these thick ones in lieu of the thin ones because otherwise it does look a little bit more like a Christmas tree than I want it to. Alternatively I can actually prune them which uh, I actually I'm not sure if that's the way I need to go. I have this particular world that has super thick branches on it. This is a fun one to work on though. I mean, super easy styling. I'm not worrying about um, any particular front. It doesn't have, even if I did like a front on this, it doesn't have enough to me to make a front make sense. I mean, the front is where it only looks really good from that one side. So that's the only side that you really uh, portray it in. That's, that's not what this one's about. It's not what most trees are about from what I've seen. Well, the trees that I like, at least. So many trees out there are just gorgeous as they are. And as long as you don't turn them around, well, hey, there you go. Some of my favorite trees are made with a particular front. Uh, in the Pacific Bonsai Museum, in that other video that you may have seen, I took a tour there, and some of my favorite trees were actually turned the other way around because they need to get light on all the sides. And that was a really interesting way to see it. I thought that was pretty pretty informative of the process that was going on. I enjoy seeing what's going on behind the curtain. Although bonsai, bonsai is a bit of a glamour. Um, you're not really meant to see the tricks that are going into creating uh, an image out of, out of a tree. You're supposed to only see what the artist wants you to see. Well, the thing with that is people will see what they decide to. An artist can only do so much. Okay, at this top, section here. It does have a, a directional lean up at the top. I'm going to keep it looking like that. One of these branches has a strong curve to that way. 
So you know what, there are dead branches or dying branches on one side and a lot of long branches on the other. This is going to have a flow going away that direction. So with this top I'm going to leave it a little bit thicker. I'm not going to worry about whorls so much. This is the point where I'm actually going to start using my, my pruners on it. Just really roughly at this point. All right, this has turned out to be somewhat of a directional tree. It's got some uh, primary wind flow to it. So from one side where there's not many branches, they're turned a little bit shorter. The other side flows out quite nicely. I imagine this is something that would happen naturally in a, a wind-blown area. In fact, there's a nice little branch up here that really dictates which way the wind blows. Doesn't mean that I'm going to call that side the front. Uh, it just means that that's... That's the way it is on here. Now what I'm going to do with this is find a nice rock for it or a slab. The rock will have a slight incline, but this tree will remain mostly upright. It'll just kind of show uh, nature in, in its forces. Well, I hope you enjoyed the simple trim up on this subalpine fir. All I really did was rip off the branches. Uh, I barely trimmed it. I didn't wire it. I haven't repotted it because that'll be springtime. Uh, it's going to be a simple repotting, so I'm just going for some youthful look in this tree and. I have a feeling it's going to do really well. It's uh, got a lot of buds that are going to pop, I'm pretty sure. Thank you for watching.